Richard Chapman speak to us about what's positive in our community. He's going to speak about the new developments that will position Kern County to attract and retain the workforce of the future. As a brief bio of Mr. Chapman, he was appointed the president and chief executive officer of the Kern Economic Development Corporation in November 2006. His previous positions include executive director of the Buckeye Arizona Valley Development Incorporate, Incorporation, the vice president of the Economic Development Council of Seattle and King County. He's also held a research position with Prudential Securities. Uh, Mr. Chapman holds a bachelor's degree in finance from Georgetown University and an MBA in international marketing from American University. He hails from Pinehurst, North Carolina, the golf capital of the world. So please help me welcome him this morning. Well, Jumped ahead. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me here this morning, and um, excited to give you an update of, of where we're headed, our county. Um, I think it's more that SWOT analysis, right? Our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I guess the good news is uh, the threats are not from within. So we are uh, very confident in our leadership, both public, private leadership in Kern County. And so, um, actually, I was in Sacramento yesterday, but I'll get into that later. Uh, but I wanted to talk about where our fiscal year ended in, uh, on June 30th. So we have kind of the fresh numbers of, of uh, client casework. Um, and you can see we had in 1819, we had nine completed projects. These are projects we worked on. We're part of that team. Again, it, you know, it takes a village, and these were projects that came through our door um, and uh, basically combined over 4,500 jobs, again, for Kern County, uh, four and a half million square feet absorbed, and uh, over $400 million capital investment. So it definitely was a banner year. Um, we had some lean years in terms of projects that landed. We had, we've always had about 20 or 25 in the pipeline, but again, you make the short list, and then do you win the project, right? Uh, that's the key. Uh, and some of these you know well, uh, Amazon. Uh, and the thing about the Amazon project here, they have 170 fulfillment centers around the country, but they only have four, like the one they're building here. Uh, it's two and a half million square feet, four floors, and three of the floors are automated, completely automated, and uh, probably between 1,500, 2,000 employees. And uh, the automation in that building, the software engineers there need Again, there's only three others in the country like it. So we, when we talk about it, make sure that we say this is a unique building. Uh, and the great thing is a lot of higher end wages as well. Uh, Walmart cold storage, you see over in Shafter, pretty unique building, uh, very high ceilings and cold storage. And that's really a hot industry right now. You can see most of our projects are industrial. Uh, Hadco is, a, is near the airport. If you see across the street from Amazon, uh, it's an Israeli company, steel distribution, aerospace. They supply the aerospace and high-tech industry. Um, and they actually have a operations down in L.A., but they're trying to expand. And as much like L'Oreal, you know, L.A. is not conducive to expansion and industrial. And so we're getting some projects that want that West Coast uh, profile and also, frankly, want a more pro-growth uh, um, attitude, which we have. And then Joyride is actually makes cold brew coffee for Starbucks, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, we have all, all types of projects, all sizes. Um, you know, and this is still not officially done, but uh, our, there's a county uh, government to government agreement. It was about a month or two ago. Um, the Bureau of Indian Affairs kind of is the last uh, hurdle. Uh, we're hoping to break ground in 18 months. And this is $600 million investment. Uh, think about the new money that's coming in. Most of the people going to that venue are probably from out of the county. They're spending money, and then they're leaving. <laughs> um, and it's not just uh, the casino, but it's also 13 uh, food and beverage outlets, a 2,000-seat theater. Uh, really an iconic name. I mean, if you look at Hard Rock, their reputation, uh, best companies to work for, um, you know, number one uh, land-operating uh, casino in the world, according to many ratings. And so we've been excited to work with them uh, very early in the process and um, see all the uh, benefits. Uh, probably you were, I think David was, the Domahoski went to the Lightning in a Bottle Festival recently. If you saw there was an EDM, electric dance music, uh, 220 bands. Uh, but we actually did an economic impact 
study, and what we saw was people from outside came to Kern County, and they were blown away, right? Um, I always say the key to happiness is low expectations. That's what I told my wife when we got married. Uh, we've been married 27 years, but think about it, and when you look at San Francisco and LA people came here, and they said, I'm coming back next year, and they spent six, about $6 million was spent. So again, our, you're, you got to talk about how we're, we're suddenly Bakersfield is cool, right? Uh, there are these, these type, this iconic project, again, Amazon, this festival. Uh, we like good projects, though, right? Uh, true and tested projects. Um, and so this is exciting uh, to see these type of, um, uh, you know, these uh, developments that land here and uh, as they move through the system. So if you look at our economic overview, how are we doing? Uh, this is Bakersfield MSA, the whole county. So you can see we're doing actually well. Um, you look at the bottom, I mean, the downturn. This is how we're, our job growth. Uh, 14, is this is 14 when the oil prices dropped, right? Um, this is our ranking. So you want to be up here, top, top ranking of metro areas, not down here. So we were actually, a few years ago, we were the worst performing metro in the country. Well, again, oil dictates about 70% of our uh, economic activity, oil prices. Um, but we bounced back pretty quickly. Uh, the challenge, this is good, robust growth. We're in the top tier in terms of best performing mid-sized metros. But our challenge will be, what are the, just because you have a job, does that job pay as well? Um, so for instance, the energy jobs, we lost paid 85,000 a year. So someone could have a new job, but it pays 45,000. So we have to monitor our per capita income, and, and those, those are really critical factors. But the good news is, again, our economy is growing versus last year. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a positive. Um, and if you look at our uh, various industry sectors, um, professional business service is actually growing faster than anywhere in the country. Out of, out of it ranks number one. Um, other services is kind of a hodgepodge, so I won't get into that. Health, we're in the top eight. Construction six, uh, mining and logging, which includes oil, we're number two. So the good news is our industries are uh, bouncing back. Construction, we, you saw these industrial projects. Um, so that's that's a positive. Um, and so I think uh, you know we're we're very optimistic. Looking at Moody's report, our growth is supposed to pick up over the next uh, two to three years. Uh, in economic development, we always talk about workforce development, it's economic development. Yes, we have growth. Um, we have a low unemployment rate, relatively low, but the challenge is we pretty much are at full employment. In other words, the skill sets of the unemployed folks really don't match the needs of the existing employers. So how do we retrain, right? Every place in the country is dealing with talent. I mean, that is a huge issue, the availability of quality talent, not just someone that's unemployed or looking for a job, but again, th those type of skill sets are critical. Uh, transportation, we do really well. I, I ninety, you know, ninety nine, I five, fifty eight. Although there's a lot of construction, <laughs> I love infrastructure improvement. Um, but uh, once you know, once it's all done, guess what? I mean, we will have a um, really significant uh, ad advantage um, uh, in terms of uh, that mobility. We're we're known for freight mobility, but um, uh, so I'm excited uh, once the Centennial Corridor. Uh, and other projects are complete. Um, and Senes, the great thing is our county created about a, two year, a year and a half, two years ago. It's called Advanced Kern. Uh, very um, innovative uh, site, advancedkern.com, where uh, Amazon and L'Oreal took advantage of it. And it's a tax credit. So as much as you may hear folk, folks calling things giveaways, you don't get the money unless you spend the money. You don't get the tax credit. So you may get you know you may get three or four million dollars tax credit, but that's after you spend hundreds of millions, right? Um, so there's a lot of so-called controversy uh, with Amazon headquarters, but for that three billion dollar tax credit, they would have to spend thirty billion. So again, it's a credit. It's not, and so our county has a really, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I like the the plan. We helped uh, develop the website, uh, very again user friendly and uh, intuitive. Regulatory, well, again, we kind of we say we're the Texas of California here. We're pro business, and we have oil. So how to, again? How do we moving forward? Oil and ag, due to the regulatory um, um, oversight of the state, are we going to be able to continue to be successful? 
I mean, that's a $64 million question. Uh, we have some of the best university colleges in terms of value and future earnings. So value, so what you pay for tuition, what your future earnings are. Many of them are in the top 10 in the country and relatively affordable real estate. Um, again, a teacher here, let's see. So um, in the Bay Area, 0.2% uh, of teachers can afford a home. Here it's 77%. Here you have to make fifty-one thousand to afford a home. There you have to make two hundred eighty thousand. So you think that we? I think we're starting to get traction on that end. Um, but again, it's not just about having an affordable ho home. You have to have good jobs. You have to have the amenities, uh, especially for the millennials. So if we look at the gaps, I talked about workforce. Where are the gaps? Um, and you know, it's these high-end STEM jobs, right? Science, technology, engineering, and math. Red means we have a deficit of available workforce. And so healthcare, this is a year, over 200, uh, basically openings that are going to be unfilled. Uh, you can see management, uh, so even oil, high, higher end oil jobs, ag jobs, architecture, engineer. Engineers, by the way, make more here than anywhere in the country, $106,000 a year. Same for pharmacists. That's not taking into effect, uh, you know, account cost of living. Uh, so you can see these are areas we really have to train uh, our future workforce for. And these are areas where we have a surplus. More the harvesting, ag jobs, you know, uh, retail, food. Um, and, you know, this is kind of common everywhere we go around the country. It's not just um, uh, in Kern County. So another one of the things we are really focused on is developing, uh, especially startup, that ecosystem. Um, and so we're working. We um, co-founded with J.P. Lake. If you know J.P., really, uh, you know, he started Kern Venture Group, works with Rain for Rent. Just an amazing um, entrepreneur and vision. So we started. It's called Kite. So it, we're going to have the big launch later this year. Current initiative for talent and entrepreneurship. Um, I called it Ketty, but then I had a millennial say, "Why don't you call it Kite?" So you know that makes more sense, right? Um, and so we want, we're focused on uh, business growth and job formation. Why? Because this is where most of the growth is going to come, or has come in the last. For well, this is '92 to 2014. Uh, so firms less than in one year, I mean, most of the growth you can see, that three million jobs were created by, and this is in the country, by companies that, ha that had been open less than one year. Now, of course, we want the large projects, right? We're getting those, uh, but the real growth is there. So if we don't have a strong startup ecosystem, how is that going to create a sustainable economy? When you have oil and ag that are being pushed, we have Sigma, we have you know, um, the uh, with CEQA regulations, how are we going to still, frankly, uh, you know, how are those industries going to be able to compete versus investing elsewhere? So um, we know that we have to diversify, but also it's critical that we grow grow our own, grow our own business. And we can do it because if you look at our county, we're actually in the top 10% of innovation. And look at East Kern. If you've been out to East Kern, going up there today, we have an East Kern Economic Alliance. I mean, they have... They have more PhDs per capita anywhere in the country in Ridgecrest. Um, they have innovation that we need to commercialize, right, and bring to West Kern because that, a lot of the startup um, potential is there. And how does East and West Kern work together? Um, I don't know how many of you have been to Ridgecrest in the last year. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> um, well, we're going into Hatchby today, so... Um, but, uh, you know, Fresno is actually, like, uh, is ranked 700. So guess what? We do better than Fresno. We have the innovation. We have the potential. So, right, this area is very high relative capacity for innovation. I mean, you have the biggest wind farm and solar farm in the nation in East Kern. You have geothermal, battery storage. Um, it's amazing. Um, and so we're, more and more, we're talking about how do we work together. Um, this is what I was talking about. So... Um, many, many years, uh, about th two years, uh, a couple of years ago, we were looking at how do we perform versus the country and young firms. So firms that are between zero and five years old, the job growth. So a couple, a couple of years ago, um, this is the most recent report, but in 14 and 15, we were like 98th in the country out of 100. But here we're starting to get some traction. So you can see we're actually six out of 100, according to Brookings, for percentage change jobs at young firms. And these are a lot of the entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs or people that used to work in oil, 
that lay, were laid off. They're starting a company. Uh, when I worked in Seattle, when Boeing laid off significant work number of workers, the next year or two, you'd see a huge uptick in uh, startups because they wanted to stay in, in Seattle. They had to be creative, and so they started their own business, uh, which is exciting. So we're actually getting traction. Um, um, hold on, let's see. Did I go for it? Apologize. Well, I, I guess I, okay. I just wanted to double check. Um, uh, so we're getting traction. Uh, one slide I don't have up here is uh, two years ago. Uh, David, were you on that trip to Fresno? Two years ago, uh, we went um, to uh, Fresno, uh, which is, you know, I'm sure you all go there on vacation, right? Uh, we went there uh, because there were some best practices there. They have a Bitwise, which started seven years ago, 5,000 square feet. Um, actually, did, I, did you click on? I think there were two I had. I apologize, but I had the longer presentation. This is the one I'm giving. It's almost the same. So I, can I go to the other one? Because I want to show you some of the slides. I probably should have named my uh, presentation with the exact same name. So let me see, because I, I realize I have, I have two hours, right? I'm kidding. Okay. Oh, it's the BAR. It's the, it's the BAR presentation. Okay. Nuts. I'm like, well, this is my East Kern presentation. Okay. So now hopefully it will work. I don't know how to click on it. Now you're videotaping. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. How do I? I'm not the. I was. I was in the AV class, but. Okay. Here we go. Okay. That's. Oh, there we go. So. I, I mean, I know everybody has to get somewhere, but I'm going to apologize for the, now if I could find the slideshow. Slideshow, that's probably it. Okay, great. So play from the start. Okay, perfect. Because I had some nice, uh, of course that's not going to be. Uh, how do I get the whole use slideshow? Perfect. Okay, probably shouldn't have. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back again. Because I'm like, well, this is a short presentation. Um, so I wanted to show you uh, some examples, because uh, I always start with this slide, so I knew something was missing. Why should we be proud of Kern County? And I'm going to talk later about our new branding campaign partnership. Um, you know, we uh, were number one in ag in the country, right? Uh, this needs to change. Now we're number five for oil in the country. Uh, we have the nation's largest wind and solar farm, right? Uh, BHE is the solar, and then Terra, Terra Generate, now it's called Alta Wind Center, is the wind. Uh, Mojave is known, right? There's 60, 70 companies, 3,000. That's space tourism. Uh, borax, has anyone been to Rio Tinto lately? Largest borax mine in the, in the world. Um, then we have Ridgecrest, 50 World's First. The uh, precursor, GPS. Uh, I believe the airbag and the glow stick were all from Ridgecrest. Um, and then we have, of course, the world's largest ice cream plant down the road. Um, we have over 50 distribution centers. So these are things that a country probably, or a state would like, and we actually have these in Kern County. Um, so this is something, the more and more we talk, especially to our locals, because we all need to know these things, and be, how do we you know, become better ambassadors for the region. So I went through that. Uh, i just show you a little breakdown of our projects. Uh, we have, a, also I should have added, we have a couple aerospace ones. But most of the companies looking to come here or grow here are in the logistics, advanced manufacturing side. That could be value-added ag. Uh, these are high-tech centers. That could be logistics, um, uh, biofuel, um, et cetera. And then we have significant solar projects in East Kern uh, moving forward. Um, and then uh, a nice uh, healthcare care expansion. Uh, there you saw that one. See? Deja vu all over again. Um, so uh, how are we uh, poised for growth? Well, you can see according to IHS, we're actually supposed to grow about more than, uh, you know, about 1.5% Kern County. Again, growth is good, but what are those jobs? And I did that. So I want to talk today also about workforce and talent. I, I, I kind of gave you a few slides before. Um, unfortunately, we don't do as well in attracting talent. We're 530. I think there's 560 on the list. Uh, why, why are we being outperformed by Fresno, San Luis Obispo, and San Joaquin? Uh, and these are the factors. Um, so how do we, right, how do we uh, put on our A game and really compete? 
because I know when I when I go to Vons and the pharmacist is from LA, I'm like, wait, pharmacists make more than here than anywhere in the country. Why would they, you have to have someone come up from LA a couple times a week? Um, how do we close the deal to attract talent? Um, and I'll talk about retention too. But I think, and, and as I talk about the branding exercise uh, campaign, this will get into a lot of that. And you can see, again, we only retain 44% of our two and four year degree grads, uh, students a year after they have a diploma. Um, I have heard, uh, talking to Cal State, they say their numbers are about 70%. Um, so, but this was just a metric used by this group um, for Kern County. So basically, according to them, 56% of these students that have their diploma, they leave. Um, now maybe they come back later, but um, that that is, you know, we have a lot of uh, room to make up. This is on the retention side, and then you have um, think about, okay, so for a minute, what, what city do you think does the best in retaining talent? So 77% of their two and four year degree grads are there within a year working. What? Denver? Denver? Well, it does start with the D, so I guess you get one point. No, Detroit, come on. <laughs> Why is Detroit? Look at the cost of living, right? The market fell many years ago. The housing costs are very low. Uh, the, the industry has pivoted. Uh, there's these STEM, science, technology, engineering, math jobs that are needed. The downtown is the renaissance. Much like Indianapolis, Cleveland, uh, these Midwest-type communities, Pittsburgh, uh, where they allow housing, they allow growth. Um, and, of course, we have better weather there. So um, what do we need to do to uh, you know, compete? Well, our challenge really is that we have this big challenge called there's over and underemployment. So you can see we're in an area that actually has um, overemployment. So what does that mean, overemployment versus underemployment? Well, I used to live in Seattle. So what, what over, uh, overemployment um, is the issue we have. Under means somebody at Starbucks, a barista may have a PhD. So nothing bad about working at Starbucks, good benefits. But they're waiting till they can get a job <laughs> in the degree that, you know, in the industry that they got their degree in. They may want to work at biotech. They may want to work in software. But the competition is, uh, you know, is significant. I mean, this is San Francisco. So this is STEM jobs, high-level STEM jobs. Okay, 11, they have an 11% surplus of available workers. So people are standing in line, right? You're getting the applicants to job ratio, who knows, 50 to 1. But they want to live in Seattle, right? They still want to stay there, but they're going to have to wait to get the job, the ideal job. Well, we have the opposite, which is kind of is an opportunity, I think. So we have a deficit. So that means 10% of high-level STEM jobs are unfilled here. So they're just sitting there, right? There's a desk. <laughs> there's a job that pays well. The average STEM job in our... Uh, uh, region pays probably eighty to ninety thousand, um, and so what do we need to do? How do we right? How do we how do we align at work with education and uh, to align the curriculum to meet the needs of business? Um, I showed you this one. You know that one by heart, right? Because this this fits uh, the narrative. Uh, one thing we've done is called a symposium. Has anyone been to that, David? You've been there, right? David used to uh, be the chair of our foundation. Uh, our foundation is different from our EDC. The foundation is a C3. About, it's all about workforce, community development. And so we saw a study about five years ago that said Kern County was number four in STEM jobs. And people said, in the state? No, in the country. But our STEM jobs don't look like Seattle STEM jobs or San Francisco. You could be working in oil, right, or ag, but you're, you're performing these type of activities. Um, and, you know, our STEM jobs um, don't require PhDs in general. Uh, you can have a two- or four-year degree and make significant amount of money. So we created a symposium where we had the students, various programs. You've seen uh, virtual enterprise, robotics. Uh, they were showcasing their success. And then the employers were saying, look, if you, if you, once you graduate, there are opportunities here. And then the, and the educators were also seeing, wow, this is pretty cool. Uh, look at business and the students and educators working together. And we had uh, first year at 1,000, uh, second year 2,000, and then third year 3,000 people. Uh, this is a uh, Jose Hernandez. He was a he's a NASA he's an astronaut that applied 
to NASA 11 times before he was accepted. He was actually in the space shuttle. Uh, kind of that perseverance, he was from Central Valley, uh, first in his family to go to uh, college, um, farm, family of farm workers, and so this is a great, great success story. So that's one thing we're doing. I mentioned Kite, you saw that, and then I'm not going to have you memorize this, but what we really need to do in this area is to, this is St. Louis, what inventory do we have today? Right, we have, we have potential funders for entrepreneurs. Um, what are the way, you know, type of uh, facilities that will help a business grow? Uh, civic uh, involvement, um, like the Community Foundation, others. Um, so we have, to, we have to really spell out what we have and then how do we improve upon it? Because no one's really done an analysis, right? Um, we, we don't have a daily uh, new, news feed or business feed. Um, where you're hearing about these are the five or ten companies that are really doing well. Or most cities I've been in, you have a top ten list or top twenty list of every, every sector. What are the top twenty or thirty businesses in those sectors? So how do we create more information? Because in many ways there's kind of these gaps, right, information gaps, both for our locals as well as the outside world. They need to say, okay, if I come here, what, you know, how do I hit the ground running? Uh, and here's one thing we were measuring through our um, kite is, okay, how do we measure how we're doing? This is, this is not, um, uh, the, the, we haven't, had, these are actually not the real measurements, just to show you, though, the factors we're measuring, uh, kind of the ingredients that are necessary for businesses to flourish. Uh, and then how do we attack that? I showed you that. So I mentioned our trip to Fresno. Uh, Bitwise started eight years ago, seven, eight years ago. Uh, this is a former auto dealership. They got the keys and said, go for it. Um, and they've created this incredible um, uh, co-work space. They teach kids coding or adults coding. Um, there's also companies there that are just leasing space. Uh, so that we wanted to see how do we bring that to Bakersfield or Kern County. Um, and then this is on the campus of Fresno State. This is called the Wet Incubator Water Energy Technology. They have 20 companies working there. They have industrial space. So the good news is I know Cal State has an energy uh, center, research center working with them. How do we get the universities and community colleges to create research that can then move out to the community? When I was in Seattle, uh, UW, University of Washington had created oh, hundreds of companies that started on campus. And most of those companies will stay there, right? If you have a professor working with students, uh, there's this pipeline of, uh, you know, that uh, basically will transition into the community. This is another building a bit wise. This is like a hundred year old building, cold storage. We went there before they had actually moved in. Uh, beautiful bones, right? Uh, but they also will have restaurants, uh, other types of retail, housing, um, and they're really bringing the city back, right? Um, this is something that you see happening around the country, like I said, Detroit and other places. So how do we, how do we create this uh, activity and excitement? Uh, you can see very colorful furniture. I think Ikea or something. Uh, this is the Bitwise inside. And it's also a meeting space. You don't have to be a client. You can bring, let's say we have a company looking to come here. Well, let's meet at Bitwise. You can see the excitement, the energy. Um, and so this, again, is the inside of that. Uh, so they went from 5,000 to 300,000 square feet in seven years. Over 100 companies. When they started at 5,000, people were, you know, skepticism that will this work here? Um, well, let's try it, right? Um, and you can see kind of the other, uh, other amenities. Um, the other one we went to was San Luis Obispo. So they have something called the Hot House. If you've been where Ross is downtown, above it is an amazing center uh, where they, again, have people working on their businesses. Many of them are students. Um, there's an attorney, an IP attorney. There's probably, you know, there's finance folks there, uh, these mentoring types. Uh, we saw two companies, Firmbid, which they they actually uh, work in the almond industry, so they match the bidder, the supply, the buyer, and the supplier. Um, well, we're the almond capital, right county of the world. Yeah, this company it started in San Luis Obispo. That was a common thread. A lot of these kids went to school there. They came up with these ideas in their dorm room, and maybe, hopefully, they want to come back to the valley. Because have you seen the cost of housing in San Luis Obispo? Uh, so we're trying to, you know, we're talking to them about that. This guy looks like he's 15. He's the CEO of this amazing company called Flume. And 
and uh, it is uh, it monitors water uh, for water leakage. So you have an app. Let's say you know you get this notice uh, instead of ring where someone's breaking in, you get a notice that your pipe broke. The insurance companies love it. I know the Current Venture Group is uh, uh, one of the funders. Um, again, I think he's from Fresno, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so amazing, right? These are the kind of uh, you know paradigm shifting technologies that um, I think could happen here. Uh, this is iFixit, which helps you fix your iPhone or um, or your uh, uh, I guess iPad or, or anything Apple related. They're at 250 employees. Again, this is an old auto dealer in downtown San Luis Obispo. Uh, they hire uh, college students and then they hire them part time. And then when they get their degree, they uh, many times offer them a full time job. Right? We talk about how important internships are, how these opportunities, how does business work with education. So that's an exciting, another exciting uh, company. Um, and think about San Luis Obispo. Diablo is shutting down, right? That's about 1,500 jobs that pay over 100,000. When you're down, to, my colleague runs the EDC there, and he said, look, look at, look at this. We're having lunch. He said, look, most of the people in the streets are either retirees or students. There's no one 25 to 45. Is it because of housing affordability or, or the jobs? So they realize they need to start, right, grow their own as well. I'm, I showed you this. Um, so we were happy that Bitwise announced uh, two months ago that they were coming to Bakersfield. And we've seen a tremendous, uh, since the announcement, uh, they're all interested in the whole county. My job is to create opportunities throughout the county. And I'm excited what's happening in Bakersfield. But I know they are, they're looking in East Kern. Uh, believe it or not, our first co-working facility, the biggest one right now, is in Kernville. I don't know if you've been to Kernville. It's called Kernville Cowork. Really cool uh, site. They're, they're called uh, Remote Workers. So the head of that works, he actually works for Salesforce in San Francisco, but he lives in Kernville and he makes San Francisco salary living in Kernville. <laughs> and the brewery is 100 feet up the road. And he has an Airbnb, Airbnb on top of that. So he's done a great, uh, I wish I had the link to it, it's called Digital Nomads, where they have people from around the country that come there and they use that facility. It's right next to the river. Um, it's a really, you know, Kern River Valley, what a gem it is. And, um, but anyway, the point is that Bitwise is growing here, um, and they've seen the potential and excitement. So more to come from that. Um, we realize in this day and age that we can't expect people to come to our website, although, by the way, our website launched yesterday, <laughs> currentedc.com, our new website. Uh, but we push out e-news. So we push this out to about, if you're interested, we can add you to the list. Uh, try to put it out every other week. We focus on the good news stories. Growth story, the projects that are landing, uh, even our board meetings, you're always welcome to come. Uh, we have about a 40% open rate. We only have about three or four stories. We're not going to overdo it. Um, and then we also we have, we promote the region to site selection folks around the country and corporate real estate execs. They, you know, oftentimes when you're out around the country, you say California, they say ABC, anywhere but California. They don't realize many times that we're different, right? Uh, projects don't take years here. They may take, you know, months here. Uh, um, and how do we, how do we, you know, prove that? Uh, we have amazing testimonials from skeptical people that came here and were blown away. Um, but here we have, this is our advanced current site that we launched. And uh, again, we are, we are starting to get a lot of traction. Our, we have an eight county EDC group that is the only group in the state that goes out, has outbound missions. Most of the state is talking about retaining business. We're talking about retaining and expanding and recruiting. You know, that shouldn't be a bad word, recruiting. But yet you see the state struggling to keep industrial here. You know, these jobs, these light blue collar jobs that create mobility. Uh, Kern County is actually number one in the country uh, for upward mobility in terms of moving from the bottom 20% to the top. So our belief is the rest of the state should be come, come here and say, well, how do you do it? Right, um, you know, versus us replicating what's happening on the coastal cities, maybe they could see some of the best practices that we have. Um, you know, and the challenge is that the average attention span, though, is less than a goldfish. You know, it's eight seconds. So how do we also how do we how do we get people to uh, understand our industries uh, because of this uh, short attention span? Um, so we have a data sheets that we put out. 
really nice and color. We have to update this one because the oil and gas, actually economic impact uh, numbers just came out. Um, but this, that, this is the elevator speech, right? So you want to get rid of petroleum. Well, guess what? It's in everything, right? Every Half the things in this room. Get rid of your cell phone. You know, get rid of your tires. Um, you know, when I grew up, it was about energy independence. So we still import 60% of our oil from Saudi Arabia. Um, and yet we hear this drumbeat about keep it in the ground. Uh, and by the way, we have the largest solar and wind farms in the country. So we have all kinds of energy. So, you know, that's why I think we really need, in food, and I'll talk about food independence, right? You go to Whole Foods and they say, hey, this, th these, these cherries came, or these, you know, grapes came from, what, you know, 100 miles, 50 miles away. Yes, so we want to use our local produce. Please help us provide the water so we can grow the crops that feed you. Um, and, and we always say we feed the world, we power the world, and we uh, defend the world. Um, and then the food, uh, I know the Ag Report for 18 is coming out in a, in a week or two. Uh, last time, last uh, in 17, we were the number one in the country. Uh, Fresno's came out, I think there's 7.8 billion for 18, so we'll hold our breath and see how we uh, stack up. Um, so we have our energy summit coming up on the uh, 13th of November at the Marriott. Uh, that is, I love that event because we have all kinds of energy. You know what, we want all types, um, and when you people come out of that uh, room, they're, they're blown away. We had, um, you know, we know that we're number five for oil. We know we have more renewable energy, I believe, than anywhere in the country. But um, we, again, need to promote that. We had, a, we had an event, an energy summit a couple of years ago, and we had a... Um, the governor's office called us after that and said, oh, well, hey, we hear you guys have renewable energy. We said, yes, we have 50. Who told you that? Oh, uh, the speaker from L.A. told us. So it took someone from L.A. telling them. Uh, we've been saying it for years, right? Um, so we could never rest on our laurels. We have to be proud. We can't be modest. And these are true. These are truisms. We're not making this up. Uh, this is not fake news. Real stuff. Um, so... Um, we just released our market overview uh, this week, and um, it's on our website, uh, currentedc.com. And so we're really excited. This one, two years ago, we won an uh, International EDC Silver Award for Best Marketing Magazine. And we use, we use uh, local, so Marcom, Marcom does this. Uh, we use real, uh, vis you know, real photos from Kern County, not from elsewhere. And it really helps promote... Uh, I believe the region. It's, again, a digital version. We do have hard copies if anyone needs one. Uh, and so you may have seen Monday we launched with the city, Bakersfield, the chamber, Bakersfield Chamber, um, visit Bakersfield in the county, and then 15 private investors. We all basically worked together for two years um, and launched uh, a branding initiative. And the interesting thing about this branding uh, exercise they interviewed uh, hundreds of people, uh, maybe over a thousand, or at least surveyed uh, locals as well as outsiders. So LA, Bay Area, as well as our folks. We actually were harder on ourselves than the outside people. When we said about, you know, the, our perceptions of how others view us was hot air, you know, um, air, you know, air quality. Uh, and they, they said things like, oh, the Bakersfield Sound, I know there's ag, I've heard about energy. Um, so the point is, is that we, we can't, you know, we got to be, uh, you know, be proud and, um, and uh, really uh, aggressive and proactive. So ours is Kern County, California, where business is boundless. Um, and so I think that's, that's true, right? We're, there's still parts of California where you can grow and you can flourish and you can afford, uh, the, you know, that American dream of having a home. Um, well, I guess I don't have the website, but our website, kernedc.com, and uh, yes, please visit it. Uh, you can sign up for our e-news on that the minute you click on that site. Uh, we just need your permission. We're not going to spam, send you, you know, send you an email without your uh, approval. Um, so yeah, I think we're on the cusp of great things. Again, we, we hopefully anybody that's going to retire, you please stay here. Any uh, millennials, please come back here. I mean, we need, you know, we're the best we're top three in the country for retirees, and we're top for millennials. So the great thing is all generations, I think, uh, can be successful in Kern County. So thank you for your uh, time and my multitude of PowerPoints. So we have time for a few questions if anybody has any.
Yes. Um, I live out in the city of the hills, and I've been an activist in the community. Oh, I'll be so, two years. Two years, I'll be eligible. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great community. Um, both Judy and I live out there. Um, are there any plans for? I mean, we've heard Trader Joe's. No. <laughs> Yeah, okay. well, Trader Joe's. Or, or nice, but, uh, Nordstrom. No, I've. It's a grocery store. It's a grocery store. You have Albertsons, right? Well, Valley Plaza, yeah, I mean, uh, East East Hills has had, I know you have a really cool farmer's market, right? In East Hills, where, near East Hills Mall. Yeah, we, you know, again, it's all about trade area. And, you know, the thing about Kern County is we're always underestimated. The minute you build something, it really does well. I mean, we hear all these national retailers that come here. And, you know, typically when they're researching it, they look at education levels, they look at income levels. And they really underestimate it because we have, I believe, a lot more disposable income. But you got to build a good product. Don't give us your D-level product. Give us your A. Um, so I, we've been looking at the retail movement there. Um, and, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the other thing is you just need more um, the population because you've had somewhat of an exodus to southwest and northwest. So it, it, the more that they build up, yeah. I know it's a roo rooftop, right? You know, a chicken or egg, and, like, and then you need the jobs and the roof. And then with the online uh, people purchasing online brick and mortar. I mean, I you know I've heard we have three times the brick and mortar in this country that uh, the, that the current demand. So I think you know, as we see it, re retailers trying to uh, create an experience. But yeah, it would be. I mean, yeah, it would be nice if you all. Or may I, Aldi, do you have Aldi's yet, or I'm sorry. Aldi, A-L-D-I? They're, they're one of the two brothers of Trader, one of the brothers, Trader Joe, created Trader Joe, the other brother created Aldi. Oh. Okay, I don't know Aldi. Yeah. I, well, okay, so they're brothers? Yes, I think a German. Or, <laughs> uh, there's one off, yeah. 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 The Northeast is great. Yes, hopefully. Stay tuned. I mean, hopefully, is right. The housing, housing, uh, that population um, uh, count increases. But I, I do think if you open a store tomorrow, there'd be significant demand. Do you know anything about the East Hills Mall? Is you know, every every month I read some new update, and um, you know, it, it is, uh, yeah, it, it, the circulation there and 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 the like. So I yeah, I haven't heard. Um, and a lot of the national retailers are going under. That's the challenge. You know, you need to develop a critical mass, right, of retailers. Um, like Bass Pro, we've talked about Bass Pro for years, decades, right? Um, but then you hear, well, they need five, you know, they need other ancillary, uh, you know, um, stores. So that's kind of that chicken or egg. So, yeah, it, it, hopefully there's a lot of potential there, though. Yes? So, uh, is it true that this high speed rail station is still going to be very slow? Well, I'm. Uh, I know I get an email every day from them, um, but I know originally, right now, right, it's from Wasco to is it Madeira? Um, pardon me. I asked if you said like the retailers have a great experience. Transit oriented development, or right. So like, if, if there's a station like on Hampstead or um, you know somewhere downtown, would that kind of incentivize? Well, I already see, I mean, look at what's happened in downtown over the last five years. I mean, East Chester, I, um, I, I, you know, that's why we want to build more private sectors, a significant, which is great, government uh, footprint, but we need to build the private sector footprint as well. So I think it's happening, uh, whatever happens with high-speed rail. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. When, are, when is it supposed to be completed? David, do you have? Not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, our, our other thing is when there are jobs in our county we work with, so we talked with them recently and we said, well, we need to know how many people you employ in Kern County. That's what I care about. There are people they are employing, they're contractors, so the more that they get that information out, the more that maybe, you know, people will understand that economic impact, because I care about Kern County economic impact, and so hopefully that will pick up, um, you know, and you heard about China Lake, the $4 billion in terms of the damage. They're, they have a serious need for, well, their machine shop. Uh, they talked about coming here looking for, you know, to work with West Kern. 
So I'm excited about East to West Kern, that relationship. Um, it'd be great if we could get on high speed rail and go to LA. I mean, our problem when we're in LA, I ask people, how far do you think Bakersfield is from here? And they say five hours. <laughs> and these are educated people. So we talk about drive time. Never to say you're 100 miles. Say you're 100 minutes. And so we have that on our website. You're a 100 minute drive. Why do they think we're five hours away? Because the average drive time is 22 miles an hour in LA. So, yeah, they're a big, there's a big thermometer. Um, and so Buttonwillow is not Bakersfield. Remember, we're one of two um, metro areas in the country, the other is Fresno, where the major interstate does not go through the city. So they, other than 99, that's not an interstate, they're not seeing Bakersfield. So is it safe to say it's basically a matter of No, I mean, we're this city, county initiative, private sector, the group that did it, they've done 300 of these around the country. They said they've never seen a coalition where the city, the county, and these other groups work together. They said it's unprecedented. So I think we should be excited um, and, uh, we again, focus on the positive. Um, and with the launch this week, um, you know, we need to, uh, I don't know if anyone, I, I mean, some of the comments on were, you know, um, you know, they we got to get over that mindset, right? The Johnny Carson mindset. Because I've lived, around the, I've lived in, uh, around the country. My wife speaks four languages, grew up in Paris, and we love Bakersfield. And it's about the people, right? I mean, I'm from North Carolina, but people here are friendlier than North Carolina. So... Yeah. Those things may vary the risk. Yeah. I have a question about the farming and the uh, economy. Production-wise. Well, I know Sigma, the what Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. There, where that's 2020, where what the plans have to be developed right by the local districts, uh, communities. Uh, uh, you know, um, but we had the more rain than we've ever what had in tw 10, 20 years, and the allocation I think was what seventy five percent. Who controls the water, right? Um, and by the way, you know you can move oil right out of you can move oil extraction to other states. You're seeing ag moving to other states. People say, well, you can't move ag; it's not portable. Yes, it is portable. So I really, I'm really concerned. Um, just by reading the tea leaves in Sacramento, that the industries that create mobility for some reason are not the ones that are favorited uh, by many folks up there. Yes? Building a pipeline from the Pacific Ocean to Kern County would solve the water issue? Uh, well, I'm not sure the economics behind that desalination, you know. Um, I mean, that's the other challenge. There is water, but a lot of it we're flushing back out to the Pacific Ocean. I mean, I know Dave's a big fan of the smelt, but, you know, um, there have to be some economic decisions made. There is, a, there is the, the water's up there, but we don't yeah. control the lever. So the desalination, the cost, and what that would be absorbent, I believe, in my opinion. Now, some of the communities on the water, you know, San Diego and others, I think, are able to do that. But, yeah, I mean, even the pipeline, you know, building that pipeline, think about the... Uh, you know, the opposition, the, you know, people, what do they call it, NIMBYs? There's another one, banana, has anyone heard, but you've heard of NIMBY, right? Not in my backyard. Well, there's banana. Build absolutely nothing anywhere near anybody. <laughs> so, I bet there'd be a lot of bananas. Any other questions? Yes? Current inter is there a dome? Okay. Okay. So we're looking at the corner of the Wi Fi and the Sacramento Highway. Okay. One of the first things we were told was about the presenting the war line on the other side of the country. We're going to get the water. Okay, so no matter what you do out there, you talk. Sustainability. Sustainability. Right. One of the one of the 
are supporting right now is an organization called Red Wolf Watch. Right now, it's up in Manteca. They're building a 500 room um, site there in Manteca to accommodate what they're doing up there. If they can do it there, we should be able to find some way to bring the lottery in. Well, and you know the hotel, like someone had a comment about the um, hard rock, the water usage, and Lorelai said that the water usage was like one-fifth for a 400-room hotel with the casinos, one-fifth the water usage if you were growing crops on that site. So when someone said, well, so that, that the other thing is the water usage for those type of activities is pretty minimal. Right. Well, you have the traffic, I mean, and... I, and hard, you know, what is what is the most gross here? It's hotels, right? I mean, look at the hotel room. Uh, I five, obviously, you'll have the Hard Rock with four hundred plus rooms. You have a captive audience. Um, so yeah, hopefully that corridor. I mean, I think with the with the uh, with the uh, Hard Rock, it's just going to explode. That's not a different, yeah. That's not a right. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> I thought it was coming to the, I mean, I'm from the south, but I, I've never been to a Cracker Barrel. Uh, waffle House? How about a Waffle House? No, I heard it was, isn't it going at, on, is it on Logan? Okay, yes, I hear it's moving forward. But by the way, the Hard Rock is probably going to have one of the best steakhouses probably in the, in the hopefully, you know, in the state, so we're excited about too. That's the thing, we need to build, right? We, uh, we're starting to get the retails. Because uh, retail, m most of the retail that's come here has done exceeded expectations.